ओके सॉरी फॉर काइंड ऑफ ट्रबल सर सो कंफर्टेबल विद दिस स्लाइड्स एंड माय वॉइस इज चल वी स्टार्ट एस सर ओके आई विल स्पीक स्लोली बिकॉज़ इफ आई स्पीक with speed it will you will not get the you will get the overlapping my words here so in the last video session discussing about the module 1 module 2 let us briefly cover we covered the different uh, phase control techniques in the phase controlled rectifiers or converters that we have started with a basic concept of uh, extended version of rectifier we have gone through different techniques there as you are observing uh, one quadrant phase controlled converter where basically we are using a combination of thyristor and a diode with input as ac and the normal pulsating dc output we are getting uh, the output in phase with the input So that's why we are showing here. Uh, we are characterizing the one quadrant phase controlled converter has both output voltage and current positive with respect to the input. Positive in the sense it is in phase with the input. Next we have gone through the two quadrant phase controlled converter. Uh, here. we are totally depending on the thyristor here and you can see here we are getting the output mean maybe in phase or out of phase after that we have discussed the four quadrant phase controlled converter where the output uh, so here you can see we are we are using only the thyristors here more than one thyristors uh, we will be getting the four types of outputs we will be having the different applications so the idea here is the uh, showing the quadrant of first quadrant or second quadrant it is indicating the kind of uh, the direction of current we are getting in the one quadrant you can see the it is called one quadrant because the current is flowing in only one direction in that light also you can think two quadrant you can see it has been shown here the current or the output is flowing not only from source to load also it is flowing from load to source means we have the I means our circuitry having the capacity to convert either from ac to dc or from dc to ac to ac so that's why this is two and phase control converter onwards circuit is a base like either inverter or a rectifier this uh, one thing you remember so the next uh, we gone through the four quadrant phase controlled converter here also you can see 
AC to DC or DC to AC is possible. So one thing you have to remember in all these uh, three types, what kind of material you are using, either you are using only thyristors or combination of them, that is a hybrid one, or purely you are using thyristors. And another aspect is whether you are able to convert only from AC to DC or both. Okay. So based on that only we are getting these types of quadrant phase controlled converters. Next we have uh, different control techniques like uh, phase angle control or firing angle control. Here you can see a simple um, load R is there. Here if you look at the waveform, natural commutation technique is used to turn off your SCR. The switch what we are using, it will indicate your SCR of thyristors. Okay. So for SCR or GTO type of thyristors, here they are using pulse kind of triggering and that too they are using to trigger your SCR only at the big instant only. Means we need the pulse. Hello? Hello? We need pulse only the beginning of the triggering of ACR. To turn off the ACR, no separate pulse we are using. As you can see here, only one pulse is happening in one entire cycle. So when you apply the pulse, through the gate of ECR, chair will be turned on at an angle alpha. So you can see the load voltage will start getting. Before that, there is no any load voltage. Understand? Whereas in level triggering, which is we are using in case of MOSFET, IGBT, or BJT, one entire square or rectangular pulse of a particular width is used. Means that for this entire pulse width, we are making our thyristor on. So this is how we are controlling the operation. Operation of this circuit uh, by weighing the phase angle either by using pulse triggering or level triggering. Next you can see the same thing I just explained here. Extension angle control. In this extension angle control, in this extension angle control, pulse is used at the end of the peak. Here you can see triggering angle is going to happen with the more delay. Whereas in level triggering, the same concept is used. So for the entire level of the triggering pulse, in case of a level triggering, your SCR is on. Whereas in pulse triggering, we are using pulse 
to turn on fire. That's all. Okay. So that's why it is known as extension angle control. Extension means pulse we are using to turn off the AC. Okay. By some means our thyristor may be turned on, but deliberately we want to turn off the AC at the end of the peak or at any desired angle by using uh, deliberate pulse. So this is one difference between uh, this phase angle to fire angle control where the pulse is used just to turn on ACR, not to turn off. Turn off is done naturally. Whereas in extension angle control, we are turning on the ACR by some means, but turn off is not happening naturally. It is happening by a deliberate pulse triggering. Understanding this one? So next control technique is a pulse width modulation. So this one thing I want to just tell it again. Pulse width modulation is uh, nothing but we want to have a train of pulses coming at regular intervals because if you, again two techniques have been shown here as you can see again level triggering and pulse triggering method. in this case one thing you just remember pulse width modulation is just giving you a train of pulses those pulses may correspond to uh, pulses used in pulse trigger technique or level trigger technique Ekandra, in order new in pulse trigger technique called again now we need two pulses turn on and turn off pulses whereas in level triggering we want pulses of specified widths for that entire duration SCR will be turned on turning this one so these train of pulses we want it to happen continuously because we want continuously to turn on and turn off the SCR so successively or to continuously convert or to keep its rectifier or inverter operation. Are you understanding this one, guys? So, just a brushing up in here, what we covered so far. One, we understood uh, types of rectifiers, it's an extension version, one quadrant, two quadrant, four quadrant. Rectifiers or converters. Second, we gone and seen up to different controlling techniques. Means how we are able to control to turn on and off of thyristors in the rectifier or converter circuits with the help of controlling their uh, at what angle they are going to turn on and turn on with the help of two important techniques. Pulse triggering and level triggering. In that, uh, we have seen again different varieties like fire angle triggering or phase angle triggering, where we are using the pulses in the beginning to just to turn on the SCR, but turn off of SCR is done by natural commutation. This I am telling with respect to pulse triggering. Whereas, with respect to level triggering, for the entire duration, any method you can take, our SCR will be turned and automatically will be turned off whenever the, the during the falling edge of the limb. That's all. Whereas in the extension angle control, as far as pulse trigger technique is concerned, pulses we are using just to turn off the SCR. The SCR may be turned on by some means. Whereas in PWM technique, PWM is basically used 
to generate train of pulses like uh, turn on turn off pulses or pulses of specified width in the level field that's it so that after that we gone through single phase half wave controlled rectifier with r okay so here you can see figure so 1a shows simple circuit diagram of a single phase half wave controlled converter or rectifier with r one is to one transformer is used as indicated by dots symmetrically appearing on either side of the transformer that is primary and secondary at the primary input single phase ac supply is are as shown in the figure here you can see the supply voltage is indicated by that is e equal to em sin omega One to one transformer shows inductive current from input to AC at the primary to the uh, input secondary of the transformers without any change. As uh, that is the EM sign as shown in the waveform, semi-circular waveform. Now this one on the secondary side, if you see thyristor. That is SCR K1 is connected in series with load R. Now, ah, double anybody there? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Shall I continue then? Shall I continue? Yes, sir. Continue. Yes. Any doubts are there so far? What I called so that I can cover up here only and continue further. Yes. Okay. No doubts. Now you can see it. Thyristor T1 is connected in series with the load R, and the secondary loop is going to give a totally a series circuit. Okay. A very simple circuit. Raised to circuit. Now you can see it. Uh, coming to the second wave, the firing pulses, gating pulses are applied during the positive peak. The triggering pulse is applied at the phase angle alpha. Before that, no triggering pulse is applied, and T1 is off, and all the input EM sine omega t is appearing across T1 because as it is a open circuit, no current is flowing in this series circuit, and so no load output to it. That's why you can see load output old is not not happening during this period. No load current. So whatever input is there, same thing is occurring across. Area. Now once you apply uh, the triggering pulse at phase angle alpha, that will turn on your T1. Now your T1 or X switch from forward blocking to on state and start connecting the current that is diode current through the circuit secondary circuit that's how you can see whatever the input is there from omega t equal to alpha up to phi it is happening across the load and we are getting the load voltage and load current therefore voltage across hcr dropped Ideally zero, but practically some negligible voltage. Only. What happened from zero to just before pi? But at pi, as input will reach zero, 
naturally our SGR undergo commutation. As T1 will be turned off because of natural commutation during negative peak. So during this negative peak, your T1 will be off or open circuit. No current is flowing in the secondary. Hence, no load voltage, no load current. So, whatever the input you are applying, it is happening across the chain. And this is how long it is happening? The entire negative. Once again, in the next successive peak period, again you are starting with the 2 pi. 2 pi to this until you apply next triggering pulse. Your SCR is still in the blocking state. It is off only. Till that, whatever the input is there, it is happening across SCR. This is how you have to explain for the one period cycle as far as the operation is concerned. Now we can see how to derive an average load voltage. So you can see here one entire cycle you have to consider here 0 to pi. So 0 to alpha, 0 to alpha where you applied the trigger, 0 to alpha, not uh, conducting, so we will not consider it. So this we are not considering. Okay. Then alpha to pi. So you can see load voltage and load currents are there. So alpha to pi only we have to consider. So next you can see pi to 2 pi for the entire negative peak your SCR is off. Okay, no load voltage, mm -hmm. load current. Okay. So this also we are not considering. So only alpha to pi will be considered. So this first and last term will be got cancelled means they will become zero because no output will be there. Only the middle alpha to pi duration we are getting the output. If you substitute this one, solve it and you are getting this one. So this I already explained. But the main thing you have to understand how to explain the circuitry structure and its operation with the help of waveforms for the entire one cycle neatly and clearly. So this already we have discussed how to get, if you get the load voltage, we will get the load current simply dividing it by the load distance. And the substitute for vary the alpha values from 0 to 90, that will give you the minimum to maximum values of load voltage or load current if you substitute that. Similarly, the RMS load voltage is very simple. The root means per square root, that is 1 by 2 power mean 1 by 2 pi, square means amplitude square. So this already I discussed. If you simplify this one by applying the trigonometric formulas, you are getting this. So these are very important derivations. One question is even many problems you are getting based on these formulas. Again, you can vary the alpha to get the minimum and the maximum RMS values. Similarly, Single phase half a rectifier means a controlled rectifier or a converter with RM. So only one addition what we are getting here. Inductance we are using in series with the load resistance R L. Okay. Now what is happening? Because of the inductance as it is an active component. One important property of inductance is that because of active component, it will store the energy or current slowly and slowly it will release the energy or current which was stored. Means it will take some time to store and to release the stored energy. Okay. Now you can see the Circuitry you can hope you can explain in the same light how I explained with the R law. Only addition is here. Now with respect to waveforms, I just want to tell going to give you how you are going to get this the main key point here. That is hatch you are getting the negative. Now what we are observing is that before applying 
the triggering for the CSR is off because it is in the forward bottom state. Means you are in the positive half cycle only, but that forward voltage is not sufficient to turn on the T1. Means it is in the forward blocking state. Once you apply triggering pulse, that will make your T1 turn on well before the forward recovery voltage. Okay. So once you turn on the ACR with the firing pulse at the alpha, whatever the input voltage is there, that is start happening across the load. And current will start flowing through the R and L. This current, what it is flowing, will start storing in the inductance for the entire duration of alpha to pi. Now at pi, again the current is also going to follow the same as that of the load voltage. Now what is happening uh, at pi here, from here onwards your negative peak or journey will start. At pi, because of natural commutation, automatically C1 will be turned off. Okay? So means current is, current will stop flowing. Current was flowing for this duration alpha to pi because of uh, conduction of T1, but at pi with zero crossing, T1 is off, open circuit is no more current flowing in the series circuit. This we keep in mind. Now from pi onwards, still you can see your voltage is increasing in the negative peak, instead it is decreasing. Increasing the negative peak direction, negative peak direction means it is decreasing. Okay. Similarly, the current is also, so this is happening not because of the uh, applied voltage, it is because of the current stored in the inductance. Now, whatever the current which was stored during period of to pi will start releasing. Now, from T1 to T11. Inductance is releasing the energy which was stored. So because of this, still we are getting the current flow in the circuit. Okay. So this effect or notch we are getting because of this inductance. That this much extra time it is taking, which is making the load voltage we are getting also during the negative field. And when the entire current we become empty in the inductance, we we'll get the zero load voltage, again zero current, then whatever the input is there now start happening across the table. In fact, beta, pi plus beta, or T1 will be actually turned off, not at pi. At pi, actually T1 got turned off because of natural commutation, but actually it was not turned off. It was forced to turn on because of the energy released by the inductance. So when energy released from the inductance stops, then we can say actually T1 is turned on. Now whatever the input now we are getting, start getting at the T1. That got delayed by pi 2 pi plus beta. So this is what happening because of the inductance. So once again, you can apply the things here and do the derivation Saturday explain and practice it. If you want to get any steps, you can WhatsApp me with a particular slide or whatever stuff you are doing on the paper with a caption of your doubt. There only I will respond in the WhatsApp. Next you can see how we can eliminate the value how we are getting the during the negative half cycle to take this flywheel wheel. So what we'll do, we'll somehow to provide shortest path for the energy release by this inductance.
positive and negative thing. What we want? We don't want this negative hatch to appear in the negative thing. So we don't want it to flow this current through the entire circuit. We somehow have to provide some short circuit path for the current stored in the inductance uh, so that uh, we can do it using the connecting the diode cross flow. So that during the IT, we will make this diode to turn off when T1 is off. And uh, you can see this diode current we are getting, and that is able to, or we are successfully eliminating the negative hash during the negative. And you can see the entire input, whatever you are applying, is appearing as the load exactly at 5. Is it clear, guys? Here, any doubt is there? If you, you can get it from us. Any doubt is there? Anyone can tell me? Are you there or not? Have you understood this one? Single phase of a control rectifier with R and RL load, and how we are able to avoid that negative hash with the help of flywheel diode. I think this was uh, asked in the first CI. Is it clear? Any doubts are there? Anybody want to ask anything? Okay, no. Thanks, sir. Anybody want? Who is this? No doubts? Shall I continue? Sure, sir. Since you can see, some numericals are there. So one or two numericals I explained. But I don't know. But I uploaded the... Uh, um, I think we need to upload. So just check it in the robot classroom where the study material uploaded as far as numericals are concerned based on the module two here. So if not uploaded, you can tell me through WhatsApp group, I will update and upload that one. You just check it in the notes if it may be coming as supplementary material in your notes. You can go through these numericals because quite some extra additional formulas you are getting here. So you can see here, this is one simple problem he has asked. If the half wave control rectifier has purely resistive load or delay angle, that is a phase angle, to firing angle, pi by 3, that is 60 degree, is given. He is asking you to find out rectification efficiency. So the formula is PDC by PLC. PDC means it is a DC load power, output power, DC square power. So PAC is RMS load power, that is the RMS square. You can remember the formula here, PDC, surface of a control rectifier, M by 2 pi, M plus cos alpha. So M can substitute here, 1 plus cos alpha is, uh, alpha is pi by 3. We can make substitutions so that uh, in not uh, phase out, explain the numericals here. So wherever you want to get missteps, steps, you can tell to what's good. We will try to rectify them. So my problems are there here. So you can go through these numericals. So, Next one is single phase fully controlled midpoint active audible cutting there. Hello? Am I audible? Will you continue or stop? So 
headphone is a space full of a controlled headphone rectifier. So once again, the same circuitry is there, but with the two th two thyristors connected in a full as a full of rectifier case with the load connected at the midpoint of the second. Again, we are using one is to one transformer to ensure output input is applied at the primary. The same will be coupled to the secondary. That is a sinusoidal waveform is there equal to m sin negative. Now, because of having two thyristors, if you look at the waveform, this one is your input. EM sign normality. Now during positive peak, when you apply the firing pulse, alpha equal to pi, before applying alpha equal to pi equal to alpha equal to pi, your T1 can see so this one is plus, top side is plus and bottom side is negative. This top side is plus that is connected to anode of T1 will turn on the TV. As the bottom side negative is there, that is connected to anode of T2, will be turned on. Means T1 is on, T2 is off. Means only half of the loop is conducting. Means you can see the current will start flowing in the clockwise direction. Through the load. Through the load. You can see how the current path we can show from point A to T1, load R and N. That is the midpoint of the electrical. So that's how you can see. From alpha to pi during this period of a positive peak, T1 conducts. Because of T1 conduction, we are getting load output voltage, load current, and the voltage across T1 will be ideally zero or it is practically negligible. Again, during negative peak, we are using another firing pulse. So, top one is negative, bottom one is positive that will connect it to anode of T2, will turn on the T2 and you start getting conducting the current in the anticlockwise direction from point B T2 through R and uh, center of the rectifier that is M. So polarity you can see but the direction of current through R is always from right to left whether T1 or T2 is connected. That's why it is a unidirectional. But voltage drop across will be, as you can see here, we'll be getting the, the small discontinuous load output voltage we are getting because of the delay in applying the fairing movements. So, means single phase fully controlled midpoint rectifier with R load is characterized by discontinuous load output voltage or load current. But we are able to recover negative peak also. So hence we are uh, able to improve its efficiency compared to half a rectifier. So this is a simple operation of fully controlled midpoint rectifier with R. Uh, so two pulse motors, two pulses we are using, one during positive peak, another during negative peak. So that's why it has got the name two pulse converter. Two pulses we are using to turn on the SCR successfully during positive and negative peak. Used for rectifiers of low ratings, that is the use of this uh, single phase fully controlled multi-point rectifier. So this again, the same description has been shown here to explain the operation. During positive peak, T1 conducts. During negative peak, T2 conducts. But the firing angle of uh, pulses during positive and negative peaks will be different. During positive peak, the firing angle is applied at alpha equal to pi. During negative peak, 
the firing angle is applied at phi equal to phi plus beta, something like that. You can see firing angle is applied at phi plus alpha. So, rest these derivations you practice. I want to give to you as a homework. So, if you won't understand these things, discuss them one thing in the WhatsApp group. In the next class, we will see a single phase flow control rectifier with the inductive load. Shall we stop now? Take the atoms. Stop presenting.